personal account. Let's see. Can someone speak? Yo, can you hear me? Yes, Ruby, I can hear you. Awesome. Oh, yeah. I uh, escaped the matrix, guys. I don't know how I did it. Um, but yeah, good. Good to have you guys on here. Um, so yeah, like I said, man, uh, everyone is in uh, in Singapore, it feels like, when I look at the timeline. Uh, people are uh, hiring planes, traveling around, all that stuff. <laughs> it's quite funny, to be honest. Um, but yeah, let's do a little round around the table. Um, so I was, I started with Ruby, man. Ruby, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So hello, everybody. I'm uh, Ruby. I'm the co-founder and lead engineer of XP Network. We are an NFT multi-chain bridge. We are currently connected to around 30 chains. I think somewhat in the five plus non-EVMs. Uh, yeah. I'm very excited. We're going to release our decentralized bridge uh, version. Uh, we've been working on it for you know the past year. It's been a very long work. It's been a, a, a lot of work, very long time. Uh, so in the next coming weeks, it's going to be released. We're going to also release our uh, new validator program, so people come and become validators of our new bridge. Uh, yeah, very exciting times. Happy to talk, you know, marketing strategies. Thank you for having me, guys. Really good, man. It's good to, to hear that things are are uh, are happening at your side. Uh, really cool. All right, let's go to uh, to Ganso Mata. How are you, Ganso? Hey guys, so nice to be here. Um, if my voice sounds like shit, it's because I've got COVID. But I'm really happy to be here. Um, I've just come back from Japan. Uh, I was at the Webex conference. It was really, really nice. Um, and I think everyone is kind of back to work now that it's autumn. So I'm I'm really excited to kind of jump into this discussion. Really nice to see some familiar faces. Um, for anyone who hasn't heard or seen me, uh, my name is Nobara, and I'm looking after the global co communications over at Genso Kishi, which is a 3D MMORPG on um, Polygon for now. We're also working on our own um, blockchain, which will be launching sometime soon. So, yeah, let's kick it off. And thank you for having us today. Ah, great to have you on. Um, I think you've you've been on one of uh, our previous spaces as well. Uh, good to see you back. Um, right, let's go to uh, Soulstorm. How are you doing, Soulstorm, today? Hey everyone, um, yeah, doing great and happy to be here. Um, I think we already had a space together, so yeah, just happy to join the conversation. And um, yeah, actually we are a launchpad, um, a premium launchpad. And um, yeah, um, we are actually the first Solana launchpad. But um, I have like strong background in like marketing and yeah, like strategies for that. So I think... I can provide some value. And yeah, what about you guys? Yeah, really cool, Soulstorm. Um, Ideal Launchpad. I mean, that's that's interesting. I mean, it fits this topic as well, you know, marketing strategies. Um, it's a common, uh, commonly used one uh, in our space, obviously. Uh, good to have you back as well. All right, let's go to Hypermove. How are you doing today? Hey, uh, I hope you all are doing fine. My name is Abhinav and I am the co-founder and CEO at Hypermove Games. So basically Hypermove Games is a blockchain-based gaming studio where we cater on bringing all type of gamers from Web 2 to Web 3, uh, be it the casual or the hardcore gamers, uh, by bringing different genre of games from casual gaming to the high-end FPS gaming as well. And we have built the first FPS game on Bitcoin too. So currently, yeah, like we are planning on rebranding and like uh, we see in the coming future, we see ourselves as a uh, game distribution platform. So pretty much excited for that. A lot of developments on the back end side as well. And yeah, excited to be here. Thanks for having me, man. Good, Good to have you on, man. Uh, that's interesting, building on, on Bitcoin, man. I'd love to hear a little bit more about that later on. Uh, good to have you on. Um, let's go to, to Hello Kate. How are you doing today? Hey, what's up, man? This is Maurice Andrew behind the account. This is the first time Hello Arcade is on this space, so super excited to be here. Uh, yeah, so I am the head of Web3 over at Hello Labs, who is the father of Hello Arcade. Hello Arcade, we are here in the ecosystem to help with uh, gaming, to provide gaming as well. 
So you can play Hello Arcades like Doge Dash, Dash of the Dead, and so on and so forth on your mobile app or actually at the website as well. So if you go to hello.one forward slash arcade, it will come up with everything. And both games are actually powered by the Hello token. So further into the future, when and if more games get developed, more things um, come out, this will be powered by the Hello token, which is, you know, what powers our ecosystem as well. So super excited to be here. And uh, yeah, looking forward to it. And thank you again for having us as a guest. Nice. <clears throat> Hello, Arcade. Very interesting. Uh, good to see you on the account, uh, Maurice. Uh, good to have you in the space. Um, and Fizi, how are you today, Fizi? Hey, guys. GM, GM, everyone. Uh, feels good to be on this space once again. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm looking forward to an exciting and interesting conversation with people on the space. But I would also like to introduce myself. Um, I'm Fizi, a content creator and also um, um, ambassador for Avalanche Ecosystem. So I'm also the founder of Inside the Hive. And Inside the Hive is a Web3 media brand that is trying to build that bridge between Web3 and Africa. Uh, we also have a gaming guild and yeah we release a um, couple of content majorly podcast about um web3 um games and also like DeFi protocols out there so you guys if you guys want to like check out our podcast you can just check out my link and the link is on my bio thanks for having me once again man looking forward to the conversation nice one Fizi. <clears throat> always great to have you on and uh, I've just been following all the listeners, so shout out to all the all the listeners now. I see some familiar <clears throat> faces there as well. Sir Chua, Sir Swa, I always say, but Sir Choice, man, good to see you, brother. I saw your your tweet uh, about wanting to uh, to listen into the space, and and yeah, good to see you there. Um, well, let's uh, let's get started with this topic, man. Uh, top marketing strategies in gaming at the last we marketing uh, marketing space, and um, you know we always. Uh, talk about how great um gaming is in general and how fun it is and stuff but um we also should uh, review what we're doing i think in a space and uh, what i want would like to do for this 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 hour is um take a strategy and then i just want to hear everyone's insights on it and views uh whether it's a good strategy whether you think it's uh you know it's outdated um and so on and uh, let's get let's have a discussion going um so let's start with one that um is probably on most used used term in in our space and that is uh, a KOL KOL marketing strategy what do we believe um is the kind of um positioning of of kol marketing strategies in gaming is it uh, you know as important as that we you know always talk about it uh what are the downfalls and uh and maybe good points uh, of it as well let's go to soulstorm first hey yeah so yeah one of my favorite topics kols um used to work with many in the past and actually also had recently space on that topic and um what i see now is like that we have a shift in the economy and i mean we live in an attention economy that means like attention is the new currency so where you put the energy like um the attention goes so um that's why kols became so big in the past but um i think that definitely um the mindset changes right now a little bit in the space of course kols are still very important for marketing um but the numbers instead showing that like the big ones are actually not performing that well um so in terms of conversion rate, it's much better to focus on nano micro influencer, um, which are maybe like um, very niche, for example, like in gaming. Right. And um, yeah, definitely um, also have an eye on another topic and it's community building, because what is very interesting that like the gaming niche is the same like the meme coin niche and everybody who like um gamed for years or whatever knows about like the power of like memes in gaming and like um 
the conversion. So um, this is like a kind of very powerful community building tool. So in future, the only KOLs which are going to survive are this with strong communities in the, in the back, not the ones who are selling affiliates or like, um, I don't know, do, doing like um, content on everything. It will be like more people who have like kind of their own DAOs or like Telegram groups or like really people who like close to them kind of, which like it's all about intensity and like, um, yeah, like it's a new mindset. Like um, many, many things changed in the industry. So that's my take. Nice one. Nice one, Soulstorm. Uh, I like your uh your take on how it's changing and also that you know kols with communities are more important than for instance the ones that uh you know might just have uh, some some numbers behind their account right um so you know in the same way that we as project are community building and how important it is for us it's probably as important for kols uh i think um Uncle Funk, I just want to say hi, man. How are you today, Andrew? Hey, hey, doing good. Sorry I'm late. I was looking, I knew I was missing something. I was looking at my, my calendar. I was looking at my notifications. And then, hallelujah for choice, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm so glad I found the space. I just knew what I knew. Something was happening. I just couldn't. Okay. It just, oh, it's doing good, man. Uh, loving the point so far. This is a great subject, man. Loving it. I'm so happy that you're that, that you're here. Um, I remember last week you joined in the last five minutes. Uh, you just you were asleep. <laughs> and this, <laughs> yes, I think this is the only space. Maybe there's a conspiracy. <laughs> I think I think this space is probably really good for you. Because it uh, gets you out of Batman. Well, I mean, it's 20 past two in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, well, I was literally sitting here. I was just working in Unreal Engine and I was just the whole time thinking, what am I missing? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny, mate. <laughs> I'm so glad I, I managed to pop in. Um, well, my thoughts on um, marketing strategies. Who was just talking now before me? Who was that? I want to follow if I haven't followed. It, 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 let, let me uh, let me um, uh, recap a little bit. So uh, it was Soulstorm, and you know we're discussing marketing strategies in gaming. And um, I said, okay, I'll I'll just drop a strategy, and everyone can just you know jump in and say what they think about it. So uh, I mentioned KOLs because obviously KOL is the most used word <laughs> in in our space. I, I literally think a lot of people don't really know what it really means. You know, um, in my own experience talking to projects, uh, it's something they mention quite quickly onward when it comes to marketing, but very often they have no idea what that actually uh, would mean for the project or, you know, what would su success look like or what kind of KOLs to look for and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's uh, we're talking about KOLs now, Uncle. I'm not sure if you've got I'm any in. opinions on that. Yes, yes, let's go. Well, we've, we've decided to brand the current... Uh version of KOLs as LOLs, <laughs> but, um, but what, uh, um, so was it, uh, Soulstorm, what, what Soulstorm was, was saying about the necessity for the future. Well, I don't know if you'd call him a KOL or just a influencer, a real influencer, but having established communities that respect their, uh, let's use the web three term alpha who respect their trusted opinions on games um that that is definitely the future because in web 2 you know we can't trust the usual suspects the the magazines the you know the digital magazines digital shows we i'm not going to say names now but you you can't trust them anymore because most of the stuff they show is just absolute rubbish so you know it's paid for it's bought and paid for and and having a an influencer or true key opinion leader that is not paid for is so important. Or if they're sponsored, they can say the show is sponsored, but my opinion is not. You know, um, that's what we need because you can't, you, you just cannot trust any space, 
at all right now. Even if the people are trustworthy, you just when I say cannot, it's it's not a willful thing. It's you you listen to the space and immediately you're suspicious. There's a there's a little bit of a sp- perspective bias that creeps in to say, is that game really good? Did they really move that much? Is that really their floor and ceiling price? Are these things true? Because it's just an absolute um um fog show you know it's a it's smoke and mirrors everywhere all the time and I, and and i think you know after two two to three years of this most of of web3 is kind of oh, i don't know if i can take this seriously so when we say like web3 gaming is inevitable those of us who are working in web3 games and and developing the gaming and and throwing our heart and soul into it because we can see the future of it and the importance of it, we believe it. But I, but I think because most of the sources of those opinions are, are either paid for or are shilling or trying to get into cabals or are doing their best to just not feel insignificant, there's a definite trust issue right now. So with all of that said, I think what is sorely needed is – we we need a like a little bit of a an evolution of maturity in the space of who actually the is the key opinion leaders <laughs> and and that that kind of escapes me i have to be honest yeah um well i think you made a, a few va- very valid points it's it's not as you know the trust uh, trust factor it obviously over the years from going from the last bull run into into this one you know um yeah the kol um uh, sector has been damaged i think you know um you have all these these cases where um you, you know um kols did it did not disclose that they were working for projects or whatever and um you know it has an has an impact and then what i see now as well a lot on the timelines are you know kols that do you know multiple projects a day like i i don't think that was a thing uh, a few years ago like now it's you know apparently a thing to do multiple projects on a day so you know i think that trust does um um does exist or you know does uh, is is kind of uh, established with longer term partnerships with kols right like you know um it shouldn't be very obvious that it's uh, just a pay for play kind of thing you know so that's something that i focus on a lot is you, you know building long term relationships with kols usually i'm just talking to them even before any any kind of deal or whatever is is established just you know they need to understand what they're working with they need to like the project they need to to feel that they're you know uh, friends or part of a project before they can start uh, really promoting it you know and in the end that will help all of us right that, that will make them uh, better into promoting it that will make them more excited about it because in the end of the day even if a KOL posts something uh, doesn't mean that um, everyone is just buying it. And a lot of his close friends will ask him, you know, is this worth something? And if he doesn't believe in it, he's going to say, no, no, just you know, just ignore it. Right. So, all right, let's go to, um, oh, I see uncle, you've got your hand up again. So um, I'll, I'll go back to you and then Soulstorm and then Hello, uh, Hello Arcade. Yo. Easy is in as well, Uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame me, man. That one wasn't my fault. This time it's not my fault. <laughs> this, this time, this time I was thinking, what happened? Where are we? I don't know. What... <laughs> so, Uncle went back to bed at half past two in the afternoon. <laughs> no, right, so... It can't even be my own fault because I wasn't on the account anymore. <laughs> but yeah, maybe. <laughs> you know. But I just blame fees for all these kind of things. Yeah, it's just Elon's fault. Yo, yo, yo! Don't, don't drag me into this, man. <laughs> <laughs> fees <Fieslon. laughs> yeah. yeah. Someone, someone rocked the space. I don't know who it was. <laughs> But all right, Uncle, you you were talking about KOLs. Uh, I said something, and you said, "Oh yeah, there's something popped in my head." Um, yes, 
Do you still yeah, remember? I, would, I do. I do. <laughs> I must say, I love you, man. I need to follow you more. I, I really love your vibe. Um, so, um, what popped into my head was this is because you were talking about um, relationships, important relationships with the KOLs, and often when you when you're a speaker on spaces. You, you'll say today behind this account and then it's like King Smooch or someone behind that account and then they say and today behind this account then it's King Smooch again and, say, and today behind this account then it's you know like it's kind of the same people so what I like about uh, some of the, the folks you know I think some of the the kind of influencer KOL um, spaces reps is a lot of the guys actually just come out and jokingly say well you know I've represented three guys today and this is the one today and then anybody with half a brain can pick up that okay there's going to be a little bit of bias towards that client um, and that works uh, you know that really works because you're building relationship with web3 and that is really what Web3 is all about. Community, relationship, transparency, I think, as much as possible. Um, and, uh, and I think that that was really what excited me in uh, your take there was relationships are not just important, they're literally everything. And relationships with, with everybody in the community, like just honesty, it's not a difficult thing. True. True, true. It's, um, you know, the best of sales is relationships, right? So it's not shilling. <laughs> you know, shilling doesn't really sell much normally, <clears throat> uh, unless everyone is desperate. And I, I think, you, you know, that's, that's we're, we're, we're past that space. But I liked your point, Uncle, on uh, uh, the maturity of the, of, the, of the space. You know, we need to mature in, in some ways. Uh, Soulstorm, what did you want to add to it? Yeah, so uh, I was about to add something like there's a major difference between like being an influencer and being like a KOL because like a key opinion leader is like what I consider a actual key opinion leader is somebody who is also like going on a stage is doing public speaking or really like um, like active trying to improve the space and participate in like, um, yeah, just like. I don't know, like to bring some advantage to the industry. And these are like, in my eyes, real key opinion leaders. Yeah. And of course, there are also like some influencers. And yeah, we should like definitely like know the difference between that. And um, yeah, like, again, back to the marketing strategies, right? We are all here on X. And like what I realized, especially like by doing community building and like, um, yeah, working also as an advisor with several projects that it's different that like people taking out the approach to like build communities, especially on X. That's why we are here on spaces. Cause like, um, yeah, it's like get, you get more brand awareness. You're like more authentic here. <clears throat> so it's a great way to actually build, um, yeah, build communities and, um, yeah, market your project. And especially good for like meme coins, um, but yeah, also like for other projects, because you build like valuable connections. You can also like uh, invite like industry leaders or whatever, um, and yeah, have like great conversations. But also like proving that you're like an expert in like your field, which is also giving you credibility for your product or like whatever you have um, built on the chain, right? So um, yeah, for gaming, it's also like. Um, another subtopic so uh, I used to game a lot when I was young and I want to like how to say to turn like the attention on like the future of gaming and what we will face because like I remember when I was young and I spent all my money on like World of Warcraft or like other stuff um, if I could think that I even can convert as assets for the future and like actually use them or like um, get money out of this. So for me, this means the future because like um, I think everyone been once through this gaming period in his life. I don't know like how old everyone is, but um, 
this is like such a great opportunity and like such a great age we live in because um yeah web3 is like giving a lot of people many many opportunities especially like the ones who are like maybe not that privileged so yeah that's my take great take there i i, I think so too i, I like what you said about um the influencer kol being active also in real life you know show up and i think it's something that in in this space is maybe unique to this space is that we have influences that are kind of anonymous you know they're just uh, hiding behind uh, a profile picture and um you know we, we don't actually know who it is so the question is indeed like how much are they really you know contributing and influencing the space right if they're just hiding uh, online and um you know, you know some of the times I, I think we might be surprised who is behind the account. But uh, Soulstorm, yeah, you've got your hand up again. So uh, just, the just uh, um, like a fun, fun um, side note, like I like to introduce me sometimes as the crypto gossip girl because, <laughs> um, yeah, I like um, worked with like most the, like the biggest influencers here um, in Web3. So probably you know them all. So that's why I never do name dropping, but like I have a lot of tea <laughs> from the industry. So yeah, just a side thing. Sure, drop me in DM the, the latest gossip, man. I uh, love to hear. <laughs> yeah, we'll start a blog soon, probably. <laughs> oh, 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 confessions by the gossip queen. I like it, like it a lot. Okay, Gans, Ganso Meta. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think just to kind of echo um, from what everyone else already said, I think um, something that I quite like as a marketing strategy and just as a community building tactic as well as marketing one um, would be to kind of raise your own KOLs and influencers because, you know, everything has a lifespan um, and everything that has that goes up has to fall at some point. Um, and that's very much the case for KOL. So someone can be at the top, someone can be the top KOL, but that doesn't mean that that will remain the case, you know, for the next three, six or nine months. And also it doesn't mean that, you know, you, that KOL that you've selected because you've seen their great work, it doesn't mean that they're going to resonate and quite understand your game and your product but you can be most certainly sure that someone who's playing your game every single day will have a really in-depth and informed kind of um things to say um and to present to other people and advertise them in a really unique and organic way so something that i quite enjoy doing with genso is kind of empowering community members to build their own content and to use us as a platform to grow themselves and grow themselves as KOLs and influencers because everybody has to start somewhere and just because someone has a hundred followers opposed to a hundred K doesn't mean that you know the tables won't turn um, the next year round because crypto and web3 and gaming they're such a high pace and such a dynamic space that you you can most certainly rely and invest on people that are still new in the space because the way they perceive things and the way they express um, you know, their love and dedication for that game is going to be a lot more genuine than someone who's doing this for a job every single day and you know, they're getting their pay home and it's just becoming a little bit robotized, doesn't it? So I think hearing someone who's genuinely excited about something sparks a completely different reaction from listeners. So I would definitely say if, you know, if, if you have the time and you're not seeking immediate results, I would definitely say that's probably something worth exploring and something that I quite enjoy because seeing those people grow and the gratitude that they have and the support that they receive from the community is unmatched compared to hiring someone external and, you know, paying them to just kind of show your stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. Like, um, I, I call it uh, enabling your core community members to uh, to actually uh, become advocates of your, you know, of your project and uh, give them the tools for sure. 
like give them the tools let them <clears throat> be able to share uh what they what they know uh one thing that we at metaverse uh, do as well is you know uh we um we engage KOLs quite early on into you know playing the game whether it's uh, internal play uh, sessions and game nights um because we also believe like that's the only real way for them to you know to first know if they like the game because if they don't like the game you know they should actually not be uh be advocating the game and then you, you know they they start understanding the game and and will be way better in communicating you know the the good parts of the game and and and, and what's uh, enjoyable about it you know if if, if it's just uh, a little okay well brief right about something they never played how can you expect them to do uh, to, to do a great job there and um may, maybe this is one of the, the the things in that as well is that if they you know if they experienced the game and if they enjoyed the game they probably yeah they will do their post or whatever you agree with them but um they will do way more right they will maybe play it a few more times will be seen playing the game might stream it out of the blue uh we'll talk uh about it at parties or whatever right so yeah get get kols engaged i would say um all right let's go to hello lab now you had uh, your your hand uh, up in the in the part one of the space before we got rocked um i know you you probably have uh, some really good takes on uh, on kol yeah man i think when it, when it comes to kols what people have to remember is and it was mentioned before as well most of these kols that you see or anonymous right they have a pfp you don't know who they are behind the account you dm them on twitter you get sold by the interaction by the engagement you have no idea how they got it you don't know if it was farmed you don't know if it was a quest you have no idea where these people come from they could be bots for all you know right so i think what people have to start doing is the same way you do due diligence on projects is the same way you should be doing due diligence on kols because at the moment a kol will be a future influencer either for the good or the bad of web3 especially in gaming as well so just a tip when looking for KOLs, when looking to, to build your brand with KOLs, whatever it is, do proper due diligence. Find out who the people are. Maybe make it a thing where you don't have a KOL unless they are someone that's doxxed, right? That could be one of them. You don't have a KOL unless you can actually get a reference from different companies and projects that's actually, that's actually worked with them. I don't understand why people don't do this. You know, if you're going to spend a couple grand because some of these KOLs charge that, right? Some of these KOLs charge a couple of thousand or they want to be in your KOL round. They put five grand into the project, 10 grand, whatever it may be. And you just say to them, okay, cool, man. Just write some threads, do a space and then done. Instead of going to people that's worked with them before, ask for their portfolio, find out who they worked with, how long it was for, find out the information from the project itself, do some due diligence and a background check on that individual as well, the, the actual KOL, him or her, and then run it up that way. I think I'll save one, people a lot of time. That's for one, for sure. And then two, it will save people a lot of money. And also, if you've gotten and done that much research into a KOL or an influencer, right, and you've done uh, all the due diligence that you needed to do, you found out where they, where they worked, you find out their prices, you find out their track record, you can see the analytics, you know, they haven't lied, they've told the truth and all that stuff. And you find that it was good, then that's definitely a KOL that you probably want to work with next time, right? You can then build a network and then so on and so forth and you can refer them. And then instead of referring a KOL and saying, oh, listen, man, this is KOL on Twitter, you know, he does X, Y, and Z. You can actually say, no, I know this person. I actually know them. We worked with them for about three months. They were really, really good. Um, this is the word that they've done for us. Boom, it's a reference already, and it's proper word of mouth. That's word of mouth that you can stand by. That's word of mouth that you can trust. So I think that's what people should be doing with KOLs. That's what we do when we're looking uh, for for, th for things like that, when we've worked with different brands and whatnot. When KOLs are getting involved, when influencers are getting involved, there is a serious background check that goes into, goes into it as well. And the reason, the last reason you should be doing that as well, what I would, I would mention, is you need to see your brand as something that is actually important, right? You need to see your brand as something that is going to be here for the long term. You can't just be having every random person talking about your brand just because you paid them a couple grand. You need to take this as serious as possible because anything that they say is one, going to reflect good or bad on your brand and who is saying it as well will reflect good or bad on your brand. So keep that in mind. 
Love that, man. K uh, K U L K Y C. I mean, it's it's actually maybe a business opportunity there, right there, uh, Maurice. Um, you know, in, instead of trying to come up with tech to connect KOLs with projects and stuff, <laughs> I think the the KYC part is uh, or n maybe it's KYK. Know your KOL. Um, yeah, I I do agree with your last point as well about you know you 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 actually do want that for your brand because if you you know if you're uh, if you if you care for your brand you you want to know who you're dealing with in the same way that if you know we jump on a call you want to know who's the person you talk to right uh, you just you know you can't just uh, uh all hide behind um, anonymous uh, handles and uh, and try to make things happen right and you know, uh, one thing you you said in the initially about the the KOLs are the future uh, influencers of the brand and stuff. It it's actually really interesting if you think about it because yeah, you know, there's one thing looking for KOLs and someone touched on that. Um, I think it was Gendo, uh about that the KOL of today might not be the one of the the KOL of yesterday might not be the one you want today. And in, in that term, it, you know, in, in that kind of um, um, concept, I do I do think look for KOLs that are growing, right? That have potential. So don't don't only look at what they've done in the past, you know, uh, how big their account is now. Like, look, are they actually still growing? You know, maybe they're in decline. Um, you know, maybe they're not putting out content as much. You know, maybe they're just shilling. You know, and, and what you will see is that that KOLs change over time. You know, they might start in a certain way and that's the way they grew. And then suddenly something happens and, you know, they're on aut autopilot or something. Right. Or they're actually, you know, not as uh, um, um, interested and excited about the space anymore. And, and they're just using their, their account as a as a sort of cash cow. So it's definitely things to, to look out for. All right, Feezy, let's go to you. Hey, you finally, man. <laughs> I thought I was a ghost on this space, but man, I've had like a whole lot about K K O L, and I just wanted to like um, you know, just chip in a few stuffs with what I think is going on right now with the K O L metal. I feel like uh, the tag KOL has literally lost its essence in Web3 in the sense that KOL doesn't really equate someone who has, uh, like, who's a key opinion leader or who has a strong foothold in stuffs they are promoting. I feel like right now KOL just means um, someone who, it's, it's, not, it's not literally everybody, but what a lot of projects just look out for when they are in search of KOL. A few projects, just someone who has a, a, an active, um twitter account that can drive likes retweets and views and it's just like a lot of this project are marketing to um are marketing through a dead end kind of channel because you get to see um stuffs like this and accounts like this are literally like bought there there's no there's no form of um organic kind of um engagement um going through the past record like there's nothing solid but you still see projects still reaching out to folks like this to 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 advertise their games or what and sometimes i ask myself like are these people blind or what or is it you guys don't do due diligence or due research now i think i want to also highlight something genzo talked about which is more like growing um your own followers like growing your own community KO and that's one of the best approach currently right now in the web3 um gaming space and if you want to be um if you don't want to spend much funds or spend much money in terms of marketing like growing your own um genuine audience of community is one way you could market your game like easily it's more like a p2p um kind of marketing for me that's how i see it and i've seen a couple of um projects like do stuff like this i think um xbox Xbox is like doing something like this in terms of like investing more into the community and we've been seeing like lots of um improvements i would like i think a couple of their community members joined their team that was a past few months ago but xbox and you also talk about like the avalanche gaming accounts that has been really really like um um investing more in um upcoming creators down there 
retweeting you know like pushing them out there and that's one um organic form of marketing and i think i'll prefer it in terms of like using k or else in this space right now now this is not me trying to throw shit that most of these um KOLs. we have guys that are organic but i feel like a lot of these gaming projects when they want to like market their games it's just it's it's surprising and it's i find it very funny most of the times when i see people they associate themselves with as um their KOLs and you ask like did you do your due diligence like how did you guys how were you guys able to come up with these people to push your project so that's just what i just want to like point out on the KOL aspect is that building your own community investing in people who are small and have a genuine audience that are literally hungry in content these small creators are putting out there is one of the best way you can literally grow one other project that's doing it as well is eclipse eclipse is a layer one gaming ecosystem on the avalanche chain and you know they are reaching out or uh, trying to push a lot of these gaming content creators out there to create content for their ecosystem and it's not a criteria or a must for you to have 10k 20k as long as you have a, a hungry kind of audience that are literally um hungry for the contents you put out there i think that's one of the most effective marketing strategies a lot of this project could, could like to could use kol works a lot but a lot of this people don't really um put much um much um, due diligence when choosing their kols great insights really man and uh, the Ami that uh, project you mentioned there um I'll, I'll have a look at that. Maybe there's a couple of things we can learn from it, you know. Um, Soulstorm and then Uncle Funk. Yeah, what I can share from my experience is that usually when you have like a very great project, mostly um, like the KOLs try to reach out to you <laughs> to work with you. So um, yeah, that's just what I see like mostly happening in the groups and like when you really build a quality project and like also like the community around you then people will want to work with you so that's why i would always focus on like let's say first um yeah build around the brand and like definitely um what people love to see is how brands grow and um that's why like the more you include your community by like updating them with every stage or like letting them participate in like decision making like about where your project goes or like which characters you implement or whatever this um, creates like a kind of relationship with your audience and um, this is much more valuable than um yeah shilling your stuff through like um yeah kind of kols or influencers or whatever but um, there was an interesting point in the beginning um, about like that actually we don't know who gets paid or like, um, yeah, like who works with who. But like it's actually pretty transparent when you're like um, in the KOL space um, and you know what's up. So um, basically there, there, there are no free KOLs, <laughs> right? Everybody is doing it kind of for money. But I would always make a difference like and check if the people like the KOLs themselves invest in the project or if they just like um getting hired so um yeah not sure if this uh, this is available for everybody but like uh, if you have like the let's say the network and like when you're like in the KOL space then it's actually easy to manage but yeah that's my take nice one yeah on that one um the the KOLs that are investing, you see that more often with uh, with IDO platforms. Is that something that you guys uh, do with so so? Do you do you guys have like a KOL uh, group that do that uh, that dip dip into the rounds? So yeah, actually we work with over two hundred KOLs in the space, and uh, like actually the space is even like bigger like from my side i used to be an uh, executive assistant to like um for years for two major kols in the space so that's why like i got very deep involved into the network and um also like running a roster beside so like if anybody needs like help with like some trustfully <laughs> kols you can reach out great great to know um all right, Uncle, and now let's go to Promise. He just joined the space, um, and uh, I'd love to, to, to say a few words as well. 
Awesome. So, so Mitaru, whoever you are behind the account, make sure that I'm following you. <laughs> and then um, I, I'm I'm sad that I missed uh, Senior Choice. Um, uh, but I just wanted to get that in before the space ends, and I'm excited to hear from the, some of the other speakers that I missed. I don't know. I think we're running out of time, but. Um, but it, it's been such a great session because I think the key opinion leaders are actually the developers on mass and the people who play the games and the people who follow them on mass. And, and if we figure out how to uh, kind of harness those relationships on mass, uh, like, you know, Facebook groups. <clears throat> so I'm not quite a boomer, I'm a Gen X, but. I do like Facebook because there's a lot more power in those groups to harness uh, gaming communities than there really is here on X because X, you know, things just fly past here so quickly. It's like a prune through a granny, you know. So, so you have to, you have to kind of, you know, like really try and keep up with the with the absolute storm of information that comes at you. Yeah. So if we had, if we figured out a way to um, have this collective flow of conscience from trusted voices uh, uh, en masse, you know, like like we do on Facebook. I mean, you can't get away with anything on Facebook. Over here, if we catch someone getting up to mischief, that they're public for a couple of hours max, you know, and then maybe a couple of hours tomorrow. But it's not it's not um, constant. It's not sustained. So marketing over here is just about whoever's loudest for a few hours, and then they dominate that space. Maybe if they're doing a good job, they'll be loud and effective in their marketing campaign for a few days. Um, or, or if they've got proper budget, proper backing, they can do it for longer. But the real power, um, which I go back to, which um, Sol said, was in the communities. Uh, and I think if we can figure out how to create spaces where all of us as devs and uh, fans and investors and and uh, like aiming for influencers, I'll just finish with this. Um, Leona Bud always says that when you when you find your voice uh, and you and you amplify your voice, when you find your message, you know you'll become an influencer or a key opinion leader, whether you like it or not. Um, and and I like that that concept. I like that flow. But where I like it most is in communities where you're you're able to have vetting by recognition. You know, we know that you've been around for long. We've checked you out collectively. We we can trust you because we know that you're not just here to extract. Yeah, well said, uh, Uncle. Um... Yeah, but you're right, man. I actually had like, I think over six marketing strategies that I wanted to talk about. And um, uh, we only have talked about KOL. I shouldn't start it. I shouldn't have started with that, I guess. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a heated topic. Um, but what I'll do is uh, in a few weeks, I will do another one on marketing strategies and we can talk about anything else but KOLs, right? Um, all right, promise. I, I would love to give you the mic, and then uh, I'll wrap it up for this session because we, you know, we're past the hour. Some of these guys in here are, uh, are space grinders, so they they might have to jump to other spaces as well. But well, promise, uh, how are you doing today? No oh, promise. Can't hear you. Your mic. I think there's something which you might promise. I can't hear him. Uh, anyone else can can hear him? No, guys, but I uh, will jump out. I have another space. It was great to be here, and thank you so much for having me here. Great, and yeah, we'll do another one on marketing strategies uh, in a few weeks, so um, look out for that one. And uh, thanks for having, uh, having you on. You were a great contributor to this session. Um, promise, man, your mic is not working. What a promise. You promised me to, to speak. Yeah, it doesn't matter too much, man. Like, uh, we do this space every week. Um, next week, it will be on Wednesday. Uh, same time, but 
uh, day later and then the week after on Tuesday. So if you guys are around, definitely jump on. I, I really love this session. I mean, you know, we, we, we talked a lot about KOLs and I, I think, you know, if KOLs are listening, they can they can learn a few things from it because, you know, projects are looking for something different than what we see currently uh, happening in, in the space. And, um, and more and more projects are aware of uh, uh, what to do and not to take it too lightly when it comes to KOLs. Um, with that said, um, thanks everyone for joining. Thanks, Maurice. Thanks, Ganso. Thanks, Fizi. Thanks, Hypermove. Thanks, Promise, for, for, for joining next time. Uh, make sure your mic works. Ruby, thank you as well. And uh, uh, my lovely co-host, um, Miria. Um, see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao, everyone.